participants at COP27 have been engaging with the IAEA and its partners about the ways nuclear science and technology can make a significant difference in the fight against climate change. The UN nuclear body had its own Atoms for Climate pavilion at the conference in Egypt this month, for the first time ever at a COP event. We all know that the challenges posed by climate change are very, very difficult. This is why nuclear is here, because nuclear has a place at the table, because nuclear is part of the solution towards a decarbonized energy mix in the world. The IAEA partnered with UN bodies and nuclear associations to deliver a packed agenda of over 40 events discussing nuclear-based adaptation, monitoring and mitigation solutions. IAEA experts also participated in other development partners' events and connected with young advocates who are using innovative ways of explaining the benefits of nuclear. So when playing Megawatt, students learn all about the energy system as a whole uh, and nuclear as part of it. So there's no emphasis on nuclear at all, but as they play the game, they learn themselves as they try and create a grid how important nuclear is as part of the mix. Pro-nuclear environmentalists were making a splash across the COP again this year, engaging the public with fun facts about radioactive bananas and dense uranium pellets the size of gummy bears. Their flash mob, Workout for Climate, attracted considerable public and media attention. In our opinion, uh, the lack of knowledge or uh, convictions that are based on fear shouldn't be an obstacle to development. That's what we are trying to work on, education and uh, giving source of information to anybody who is able to listen. At the flagship nuclear energy event, the Director General announced a new IAEA Atoms for Net Zero initiative. Speakers at IAEA energy events included senior figures from countries interested in including more nuclear in their energy mix and those already using nuclear power. This is my first COP and it is really very positive about nuclear so far. I've had engaging conversations about nuclear generated hydrogen and about the need for one of our largest clean energy sources to expand and that's nuclear. Adaptation was high on the agenda at this African COP and the agency released a comprehensive report on nuclear technologies and climate adaptation in Africa, describing how these are building resilience on the continent. This was also showcased in a new IAEA film about improving food security in Kenya. To engage online audiences, the IAEA released regular interviews with activists and experts and live-streamed all events, extending the reach of the pavilion beyond physical participants. So in this pavilion, agency uh, and its uh, international partners will spread messages on nuclear power and science technology in addressing mitigation, uh, adaptation and monitoring related to the climate change. I think we draw like, quite a attention with this pavilion in physical presence and I see people are coming to ask questions. That's what we want to achieve. So it's happening. Next year's COP will be held in the United Arab Emirates and Mr. Grossi met with the country's Conference Director General to plan an active engagement. The UAE is the first country in the Middle East and North Africa region who integrated nuclear with renewables in their net zero strategy.